Um, well, hello everyone and welcome to Above, Aboard and Beyond Unique Perspectives by Rail presented by the Center for Rail Photography and Art. My name is Haley Page and I'm the Exhibitions and Events Coordinator for the Center. In today's programming, we're going to be hearing three presentations that explore unconventional viewpoints in the field of railroad photography. Jennifer Albeck will share her perspectives as a newcomer to the hobby and take us into the skies with her drone photography. Stacey Evans will show us glimpses of the changing American landscape as an Amtrak passenger. And Scott Lotus will show, share some highlights from our breathtaking John Gruber collection, who is one of the co-founders of the center. And please note that we have had a schedule change um, from our earlier advertising. Daniela Ho Hobikova um, is not able to be with us today due to a scheduling conflict, but we do hope to follow up with her photography, which gives an insider view into the railways of the Czech Republic um, in a presentation at a later date. So I'm going to run through some housekeeping information on Zoom webinars controls, and then I'll turn the mic over to our executive director and president, Scott Lotus. As I mentioned, we use Zoom webinar for our presentations, which means that audience members do not have access to their personal audio or camera during the event. You can change how you like to view your presentation in the top right corner of your Zoom screen. And I believe the options are between speaker and gallery view. Um, so you can play with those and see which one you prefer um, and how you prefer to view today's programming. At the bottom of your Zoom screen, you'll see a number of icons. Please use the chat function for any comments you have during the presentation. By selecting all panelists and audience, you will ensure that everyone can see your comments. And please use the Q&A function to submit any questions you have for our presenters. Following each presentation, we will host a Q&A session. If you have a question at some point throughout one of the presentations, make sure that you post that in the Q&A, not the chat. That'll just make it easier for us to see your question, make sure we get it answered. Uh, we are recording uh, today's program and everything will be made available on our YouTube page early next week. And I'll drop that link in the chat now. Just um, and then I'll drop it in there again at the end. So that's youtube.com slash rail photo art. And that's all one word. So thank you. And with that, I'll turn it over to Scott Lotus, who will introduce the Center for Road Photography and Art in some more detail. Oh, well, thanks, Haley. Uh, good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us on what's a somewhat chilly uh, November Saturday here in Madison, Wisconsin. And I have to start with an apology uh, to our board chair, Bon French, for our uh, poor timing today, because at this very moment, less than a mile from our office here in Madison at Camp Randall Stadium, it's a kickoff between Bond's Northwestern Wildcats and our Wisconsin Badgers. Uh, but as Haley said, we will be recording today's sessions. And uh, so it's fine with us, Bond, if uh, you wanna watch the game, you can catch up with us later. Uh, just please don't ask me to say who I'm rooting for today. I would hate to hurt my performance review later this year. <laughs> Um, but that said, I think we've got some great photography today on deck to warm your spirits and to excite your creativity. I'm looking forward to, to hearing from our presenters and to, to sharing some of John Gruber's work later in the day. Uh, as I think a lot of you know, uh, the Center for Reverend Photography and Art is a national nonprofit with the mission to preserve and present significant images of railroading. We have a phenomenal board of directors who, who guides that work, uh, a wonderful staff in Madison who makes it happen, and tremendous support from our community. Uh, all of you out there tuning in and supporting our work help make possible everything that we do, and we can't thank you enough. Um, as Haley mentioned, we've been doing these online events and posting them to our YouTube page. Uh, those go back to uh, May of 2020. I think this will be our 24th online event. Uh, some of them uh, single presentations uh, as long as well as a few uh, multi-presentation events like this one. And as Haley said, you can find all of those on our YouTube channel. Uh, that is youtube.com slash railphotoart. And again, that link is also in the chat and she'll share it there again later. Uh, in addition to our online presentations, we do a lot of other work too, uh, including print. And I am just polishing off uh, the upcoming winter issue of our quarterly journal, Railroad Heritage, that will go to the printer on Monday and should uh, be hitting mailboxes uh, in early December. That goes out to all of our members. If you're not a member yet and want to join, we can make sure we can still uh, get the winter issue out to you. Uh, there's details about how to do that on our website. Uh, we've got some great content in that and all of our art issues. They typically run 68 pages these days and, and come out four times a year. 
Uh, we also publish books and we have a very exciting new one out. It's called The Railroad and the Art of Place, uh, an Anthology. And this, this is a hefty tome. It is 372 pages uh, with beautiful reproduction and, and really lush printing. And we're really excited to be able to uh, share this book with you. It is now available and shipping uh, on our website. So uh, if you'd like to purchase this, it is $60. Um, Printing for this was made possible with a, a really generous grant from the Kaler Family Foundation. David Kaler, one of our board members, has some excellent photography and commentary in this, along with the work of several of our other members and people beyond our community, all looking, uh, I think, rather uniquely at the railroad landscape, how it's changed, how we can continue to approach it as photographers. So this is, I think, a really interesting book, and I'd really encourage you to check it out on our website. We've had some programming about it in the past, if you want to learn more about it uh, through YouTube as well. Um, so that is our next book coming out. And in addition to our publications, uh, we do a lot of other things too. Those include traveling exhibits. And despite the circumstances of COVID, Haley's done a great job of keeping those on the road. Our museum's uh, partners have done great jobs of, of finding safe ways to continue to showcase our traveling uh, exhibitions. And again, mentioning David Kaler's photography, he has a show up uh, from his previous book, The Railroad and the Art of Place. And that is at the Groman Museum, uh, located in downtown Milwaukee. And if you find yourself there before uh, the beginning of December, I'd really encourage you to check out David's exhibition, uh, which we put together, as well as the Groman's permanent collections. Uh, they have a, a really uh, unique and, and beautiful collection of industrial themed art that kind of shows the, the history of work. Uh, and and it's, if you like railroads and, and the other industries that the roads are connected to, uh, I think you'll really enjoy the paintings there at the Groman Museum, as well as our, uh, as well as our traveling exhibits. Uh, now, as we continue to do these in these online conferences, we do look forward to returning to in-person events, and we are planning one uh, for this coming spring. Uh, our normal time frame, uh, back at our normal venue of Lake Forest College uh, on the shores of Lake Michigan, about 30 minutes north of Chicago, and that is set for April 8th through the 10th. Uh, 2022. Uh, we'll have our usual reception and dinner on Friday evening, a full slate of presenters on um, Saturday, and then some additional presentations on Sunday morning. We'll have details about that on our website, and we'll open registrations right after the first of the year. Uh, so follow our website or any of our social media channels, uh, or look in your mailboxes for more information about that. Uh, additionally, uh, we have our awards program open now, and you can find details about that on our website as well. Our website is railphoto-art.org, and we have uh, pretty much all of our information is available there. Again, that's railphoto-art.org. And the awards uh, submissions this year are for the theme of weather effects. Uh, and we're looking forward to what we get in that. Uh, that submission window is open right now and you can find details and deadlines about what to submit and when. Uh, we have some uh, cash prizes, $750 for the first prize winning image. Uh, and you can see our past winners on there as well. So if you have some great photography showcasing railroads in all forms of weather, uh, we'd really encourage you to consider submitting to our upcoming awards program. Uh, and again, details for that on our website. So we've covered four of the main things we do, our events, our exhibitions, our publications, and our awards program. Uh, but the thing we're actually doing the most of these days is our collections program. Uh, we have a fast growing archive that now has close to half a million railroad photographs in it. And that number continues to go right up. Uh, we have some phenomenal work that we're collecting and working to make publicly available and accessible. And the person in charge of all of that is our archivist, Adrian Evans, who is also online today. And she's gonna share some highlights from our collections. And I will also be showcasing uh, some uh, from one of them in particular, that of our founder, John Gruber, in my presentation at the end of the day today. Uh, Adrian joined our staff uh, four years ago this month. Uh, uh, and I think uh, she may not have realized everything she was bargaining for. Uh, we've, we've really, as she'll show you, our archives have really ballooned uh, in the time that she's been with us. I'm not sure whether those are correlated or not. Uh, she may have some opinions about that. Uh, but she's doing a tremendous job working with our growing collections team and keeping up with uh, all of the great photography that we have coming in. Uh, prior to joining us, Adrian did her master's degree uh, in library and information studies here at the University of Wisconsin at Madison. Uh, she then worked at the Image Permanence Institute in Rochester, New York, 
and then at History Colorado in Denver. Uh, she spent a total of three years at those before finding her way back to Madison to join us in November of 2017. Uh, and so with that, it is my uh, great pleasure to introduce our archivist, Adrian Evans, to tell you more about our collections processing work at the center. Uh, Adrian, whenever you're ready, take it away. Thanks, Scott. Um, I'm just going to need a second here to share my screen. And get started with the presentation. Are you guys, which screen are you guys seeing? Um, can someone let me know? I've got the, the dunes are on my screen. Oh, okay, good. Uh, usually there's a little green line around it. So I was, ah. I was nervous. All right, thanks, Scott. <laughs> no problem. All right. Um, hi, guys. Uh, my name is Adrian Evans. And for those of you who don't know me, I've been with the center since 2017. Uh, my main job at the center is to um, oversee uh, the preservation, processing, and digitization of our holdings. Um, today, I'll be speaking with you about recent developments uh, in the CRPA's collection department. Uh, I'm calling that a department now because there are about seven of us as opposed to just me and an intern when I first started. Um, and I'll also be highlighting some of our recent digitization efforts. And just of an, as a note for those of you who have seen a uh, collections update before, we are currently processing about five collections. Uh, so I won't be able to show you as many uh, images from each, uh, but if you want to see more, please reach out to me. Um, and here we see a stop on the North Shore Line in Kenosha, Wisconsin on January uh, 12th, 1963. Uh, this image was shot by John Gruber. Um, before I get into the digitized images, I just want to talk a little bit about some of the big projects that will be coming down the pike this year at the center. Um, so, of course, we're doing our processing work, but uh, in addition to that, the department will also be pursuing two large projects this year. Um, first, we are closing in on selecting a dedicated collection management system, um, and this will help us better track uh, images in our collections and provide greater access to more images uh, to you all, the public. Um, and this system will include a public digital portal uh, for our online collections, uh, which will feature robust uh, cataloging and uh, search capabilities. Uh, we're looking at publicly launching the new site in late 2022 or early 2023. Um, second, uh, we are starting a cold storage program uh, for the long-term preservation of our older and at-risk uh, photographic formats. Um, and actually next week, two upright freezers, which will be the start of the program, are going to be arriving at our archive space in Madison, Wisconsin. Um, once they arrive, we'll, we will be assessing and setting priorities for which items will be preserved in the freezer. Um, we're really excited to pursue uh, these new technologies and uh, look forward to more updates about our progress throughout the year. <clears throat> and um, just starting us out here, I do want to take a look at our collections growth. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, this represents their collections growth just over the past 10 years. Um, and looking at 2020 and 2021, uh, we've pretty much uh, maintained our images at the archives at just under half a million images. Um, and part of that is due to the pandemic. Of course, we couldn't have people going out to uh, pick up collections. Um, and another reason is that uh, we've had a lot of donations of uh, single fine art items this year as well. Uh, one thing to pay particular attention to is that very last dot on the graph. Uh, this is our 2022 plus category and represents our current commitments to collections that are not here at the archive, but will be arriving. Um, so the number here represents not only what we have stored, but what we're committed to. Um, and this number I have had to update since our last, uh, last time we talked and we're just under 860,000 images uh, that will one day all be here at the center. So if I seem to be stressing a little bit about the growth of the collections or our collections team, this is kind of why. Um, and speaking of that team, 
I do like to introduce uh, some of the folks that make all of this processing work and growth possible. So here we see uh, Archives Associate Natalie Kresik and our recently hired intern Charles Tonelli. Uh, both are hard at work at the Shaughnessy Collection in these images. And uh, Natalie specifically requested that I photograph her uh, in her smart looking magnification headgear here. Um, and just last year, we also brought on associate archivist Heather Sontag, who's working on the Ron Hill collection, and contract archivist Gil Taylor, uh, who is working on the Jim McClellan collection. Uh, here we also see intern Abigail Guidry, uh, who is currently uh, working on the John Gruber collection. Now, I should also mention a couple of new faces on the slide this time around. Uh, in late summer of 2021, Elrond Lawrence, uh, a name that is likely familiar to most of you, joined us as our first acquisitions coordinator. Um, in this role, Elrond will be working directly with collections donors to ensure the smooth transfer of materials uh, to the center. Uh, Elrond is currently committed to a bevy of projects, uh, so he's part time for now, but we look at uh, potentially expanding his role as everyone's schedules allow. Um, I should also mention that in September, we brought on Aaron Rose, uh, who I like to refer to as our prodigal archivist. Uh, Aaron was actually an intern with the center uh, back when I started in 2017. Uh, and Aaron is returning to the center as our reference and digital projects archivist. And in this role, she'll be responsible for managing image requests, processing collections, and helping us migrate data to our new collections management system. Um, so welcome aboard, everybody. Um, and now to get started with some processing updates. Uh, heading toward the end of 2021, we're continuing our work on the collection of rail photography luminary Jim Shaughnessy. This whole collection contains about 90,000 images, uh, about 60,000 of which um, are negatives, and this is where we've chosen to concentrate our efforts. Uh, the negatives are arranged alphabetically by railroad, so we are tracking our progress by the letter. Right now, we're a few thousand negatives into the D series, which mostly features the Delaware and Hudson, which was a favorite of Jim Shaughnessy. Uh, the DNH accounts for uh, the majority of the remaining unprocessed boxes, which makes us feel like we've made a lot of progress, uh, but there's still a lot of ways to go. Um, and I should mention we have digitized about 10,000 images uh, from this collection thus far. And in this long exposure shot, uh, these are favorites of mine among the Shaughnessy collection, you can just make out kind of the ghostly impression of a worker um, as he kicks his foot at a very snow encrusted Canadian national uh, locomotive. And uh, Shaughnessy took this image in Stratford, Ontario in February of 1959. Um, moving forward, um, here's another great night shot. Um, this is a DNH uh, Baldwin built chart locomotive, uh, number 1216, being painted in the booth at Colony Yard in um, Watervillette, New York in 1974. Um, another ongoing processing priority is, of course, the collection of our founder, our, our founder uh, John Gruber. Uh, there are approximately 109,000 images in this collection, um, and we started digitizing the negatives in fall of 2020 and have had two interns uh, working on and off on this collection. Um, and thus far, we've digitized about 16,000 images from this collection. Uh, the negatives are arranged in chronological order starting in the 40s, and right now we're working on images from 1965. Um, throughout reviewing this collection and overseeing the processing, uh, one of my favorite aspects of John's work is his focus on the people and culture surrounding rail travel during the mid 20th century. Um, and I think this image is a fabulous example. Um, you can see a lot of really interesting characters here. And this was taken aboard the last North Shore Line electroliner uh, between Chicago and Milwaukee. And this was uh, taken on January 20th of 1963. Um, in addition to John's negatives, we've also been shipping away at his large collection of slides. Uh, this has been a bit of a slower process than the negatives, as we've been taking time to be selective in our digitization efforts 
and treat preservation issues as they arrive with this group of materials. Uh, but this has enabled us to find some real gems in this collection. Um, here you see a Southern 4501 silhouetted against a lovely summer sky as it leads the Circus World uh, train across the Wisconsin River at Merrimack on June 29th, 1973. I find it particularly satisfying to see uh, the alignment of the locomotive and the boat beneath here. Um, next, we're also actively working on the David Maney collection right now. Um, David sent us many batches of negatives over the pandemic, uh, but we are just now returning our full attention to cataloging and rehousing these negatives. Uh, David's contribution to the center will number approximately 19,000 images uh, once everything arrives. <clears throat> and here we see uh, Western Maryland number 1124 leading uh, westbound freight at Frostburg, Maryland. Um, and I believe this was taken in the 60s. Um, and here, another selection from David, uh, we see a crew member speaking with a father and son along the Valley Railroad, which is a heritage line in Essex, Connecticut. Uh, this was taken August uh, 13th, 1978. And behind them, locomotive number 97 is visible. Uh, 97 originally served the Birmingham and Southeastern as number 200. <clears throat> Um, we've also been making uh, great progress on the Jim McClellan collection. Uh, it arrived in June of 2020 and we began to process it later that year. It contains 25,000 slides, about 13,000 of which are uh, rail related. Um, and also a bonus with this collection, um, there are several rolls of uh, Super 8 film. Uh, contract archivist Gil Taylor began selectively digitizing images this, in this collection. Uh, with the intention of digitizing about 10% of the slides. Um, selective digitization is somewhat of a new uh, endeavor for the center, uh, and you can read more about that in an upcoming edition of my Out of the Archives column, um, which should appear, I think, on stands in 2022, of course, in Railroad Heritage. Um, and Gil has just uh, finished up his digita digitization and rehousing of this collection. Uh, we're just currently doing a little cleanup on the rights to the photos uh, before opening up the collection to researchers. And here we see an uh, eastbound uh, Canadian National Freight train as it crosses the bridge over the Fraser River near Lytton, British Columbia in January of 1996. Um, and then here, another great image from the McClellan collection. This is an image uh, Jim shot from the vantage point of a passenger car aboard the Penn Central. Uh, and this was shot in Albany, New York in November of 1969. Uh, you can see part of the former uh, DNH building, which I now believe is SUNY Plaza uh, on the left side of the image. Um, and finally, we're also working on the Ron Hill collection right now. Uh, since December, uh, Associate Archivist Heather Sontag has been working on processing this collection. Uh, like Gil, Heather has also utilized selective digitization and has currently digitized approximately 2,100 of the slides from the collection. And Heather estimates that processing is about halfway complete at this point. Um, and uh, planes, trains, and automobiles abound in this Ron Hill image. Um, and this was shot of a CXX freight train uh, near the Miami International Airport on January 21st, 2000. And another stunning image from Ron, uh, this is a Canadian, a Canadian Pacific passenger train uh, leaving the spiral tunnels um, in Field, British Columbia. And this was shot on August 14th, 1966. Um, and before wrapping up today, I do want to talk about a few new collections that will eventually be coming down the pike. Whenever that slide wants to come up, there we go. Um, we were recently thrilled to announce that photographers and longtime friends Tom Gildersleeve and Gordon Glattenberg have chosen to entrust their work to the center. Um, both reside in Southern California and have been photographing rail subjects uh, for many years and are quite widely published. 
Um, these collections will be transferred to the center at a later date. Uh, in the meantime, please uh, refer all image requests to Tom and Gordon, and you can read a little bit more about our acquisition of these collections uh, in the current issue of Railroad Heritage. Um, there's also quite a bit online about this acquisition as well. And finally today, um, I want to talk a little bit about some of our fine art acquisitions. Um, so our, our collection holdings are primarily composed of photographic negatives and slides of various formats. Um, however, we are dedicated to collecting uh, fine artworks and other graphic works on paper. Uh, this has actually become somewhat of a prerogative for the center in the past few years. Um, and this is why I've chosen to show you this uh, Japanese woodblock reprint from the series True Pictures of Famous Trains in Tokyo, um, which was originally published, uh, I think, between 1884 and 1889 uh, by Isuji Inoue. And this is a Showa era print, um, which is actually a reprint using the original woodblocks. Um, and we're focusing uh, more effort on bringing more works like this to you. And we're looking really excited to kind of diversifying the holdings in the archive. Um, and that pretty much does it for me today. Uh, we are very active on social media and you can always find us there. If not, please uh, send us an email, an email uh, at info at railphotoart.org. Um, and thanks for having me. Thanks, Adrian, and, and great work to you and everyone on our collections team uh, for, for all of your ongoing efforts. And it's always fun to see the, the fruits of those labors. And so thanks for sharing these with us today. Uh, if anyone's interested, particularly in that um, uh, Japanese woodblock print, I'll actually have a few more words to say about that in the next issue of Robert Heritage. That was a fun little research project uh, and certainly a, a staff favorite of some of our, our, our recent fine art acquisitions.